Today's video might help you get a job someday, or at least help you avoid some of the communication pitfalls that keep people from getting interviews. Let's talk about it. Welcome back everybody. Many of you are trying to learn how to program so that you can get a job. Or maybe you're trying to get better at the job you already have. The point is, is that you're trying to get paid for your skills. Now that may not be the only reason. I hope you actually enjoy this stuff, but that's a big part of why we're here. And so that's what I want to talk about today because that's something that so many people get wrong, particularly the part where you're reaching out to people for a job or to get admitted to a PhD program or whatever it is. You want something from somebody and you reach out and you're like, hey, I'd like to work with you. So I run a research lab. I've also had the opportunity of being involved in the hiring process at three different companies back when I was working in industry. And naturally, of course, each of these different scenarios has its differences. They're different cultures, different processes. But it's interesting, the way people communicate and some of the things that people get wrong are often very much the same. And that is because fundamentally what you're doing is you're applying. You're asking someone for something. You're reaching out through email or some social media platform saying, hey, I want a job. I want to work with you. I want to join your team. And sometimes you have connections that can make this a little easier. But today I want to talk about just when you're cold calling, when you're reaching out to someone that you don't know, because this communication is critical and it's something that people get wrong all the time. So let's look at a few examples. So these are emails, real emails that I've received. There is nothing special about them. I get hundreds of these emails every year, maybe even thousands. And most of them look basically like this. And that's the problem. I delete almost all of these. Even if I'm actively looking for new PhD students or a staff programmer for my lab, and I often am, but even if I'm looking, these emails are useless. Okay, so why are they so bad and how could they be better? Now, the main reason they are so bad is because they focus on on the writer, not the reader. Essentially, you can boil these down into a couple of simple statements, right? I want money. Uh, I want to get a PhD, okay? I want to join your team. I want an assistantship. I want funding. The interesting thing is that the writers don't seem to have thought about what I want. They haven't really thought about what I'm looking for or what I might care about. I mean, does this writer even know what I do? Does this writer know who I am? From this text, I don't think they do. And with hundreds of emails and very little time, why would I spend my time and energy on someone who doesn't even know who I am really, doesn't seem to anyway, and doesn't know what I do? This email is likely to be a waste of my time. I mean, folks, generic emails are the worst. I don't know who out there is giving you the advice that you should make a generic email and blast it out to everyone on the planet who might possibly be hiring. But it is terrible advice. Let me repeat that. It is terrible, like the worst advice ever, because you're just cluttering people's inboxes. You're wasting their time. You're making them mad. In the end, you're the last person I want to talk to because you are making my life worse and you're making job hunting worse for everybody else out there. And if none of that matters to you in the end, it's not going to get you what you want, which is a job. I mean, maybe it feels satisfying for someone to say, I applied for a thousand jobs today, but how many of those leads called you back. So tip number one for today is send fewer emails and make them better. If you want to work with me, take some time to understand who I am. What do I do? Read my lab website, read some of my papers, understand what I care about, what, what matters to me. Naturally, you're not going to have a complete picture of what matters to me, but you can get a sense. You can get a sense for what I care about and what I'm interested in. Now, I know this takes time, but do you want to work with me or not? Also in the process, you might discover that you're not that interested in what I do, in which case you saved yourself and me time. And some of you will look at it and be like, this is so cool. I want to do this, in which case, great. Now we have something interesting to talk about. So that brings me to tip number two, and that is be specific. Don't write generic emails to people. Do not just copy and paste a bunch of keywords from my papers, the title of a paper, for example, or some keywords from my webpage and expect that to get my attention. This doesn't fool anybody, especially like in this case where you actually included the formatting, you copied and pasted formatting along with the text. But even if you didn't do that, you're not fooling anybody. It's obvious that this is a form letter. Your goal is to send me a note that I actually want to read, that I actually care about. And specifically, I'm typically looking for a couple different things. So as I've already mentioned, I want to know that you actually know what you're getting yourself into. You know me. You understand the work that I do. From there, I want to know why are you interested in working with me? Why does my work inspire you, excite you? I'm looking for inspired people. I'm not looking for people who want a trip to the United States or South Carolina or wherever and 
they're just willing to write code along the way if they have to. That's not the person I'm looking for. I want someone who's actually excited about my work. I'm looking for great team members. So another thing, I want to know what you can do. That doesn't mean just send me a generic resume. Generic resumes are not that helpful. I want you to tell me what skills you have that are going to make you a valuable team member for my team. What can you do for my lab that's going to make our work better? Now, maybe you don't have all the skills that you need for my lab. That's fine. In fact, I expect when I bring someone on that I'm going to have to do a lot of training. That's fine. But it's great to know what the things are that I'm not going to have to teach you. And the third thing that you can definitely tell me about is what kind of work you want to do, right? Showing that you have interests, that you're not just looking for any old job, but like if you came here, if you joined my team, what are you interested in? What do you want to work on? Do you want to be a hardware specialist, software specialist? Are you interested in programming languages, adaptation, resource allocation, whatever, any of these things? Tell me what you're excited about. Tell me what you would like to work on, what you'd like to get out of it. Now, naturally, you don't have a full picture of the priorities of our lab. That plan may change if you actually come on. And that's completely natural, but this gives me a sense for where you're coming from, what you're thinking, and how you process things. And that's really helpful to me. And so now as you are, as you're getting specific, you're, there's more and more interesting specifics that you're putting into these emails. This brings me to another point, and that is be brief. I think I mentioned that I get hundreds of these emails. I don't have a lot of time to read all of them. And so you don't want to be filling these emails with a ton of flowery text about my illustrious university or my great publication record or blah, 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 blah. I don't need you to fan my ego. It's just fine. What I need you to do is get to the point quickly. Tell me the things I care about quickly so that I can decide whether or not it makes sense to actually respond and talk to you. So get to the point quickly, use fewer words to say more, and tell me the important stuff first. Front load your email with the stuff that you think is most important for me to know about you. Not flowery stuff about how great my lab is or whatever. And again, for some of you, you're like, ah, this sounds like more work. Also, some of you may be thinking, I went into programming and computer science so I didn't have to write. Well, I hate to break it to you, but one of the things that I'm usually looking for, especially in new PhD students, are people who can communicate well, both in writing and speaking. And so you can write a good email, that's really helpful for me. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, but if you can convey complicated ideas and topics in an easy to understand way, I always take that as a good sign. Now, let's say you do all of this. Does this guarantee that you're going to get a job? No. Does it guarantee that you're going to get an interview? No. You might not be the person I'm looking for. I might have a particular niche in my lab that I'm trying to fill, and you just might not be the right person for it. And that's just life. Maybe I've got 10 really strong people, and I go through all of them, and I just happen to choose someone that's not you. Again, that's life. I also want to point out that some of you are going to take this advice and you're going to act like you follow it, but it's still going to be vague. So like this example right here, this is a note that I recently received in which clearly they're trying to follow my advice. But if you look at what they're actually saying, it's still vague. It's still generic. So it didn't actually follow the advice. So make sure you're actually following the advice. But the point is, this doesn't guarantee you'll get a job, but this will get you into the game. This gets you into contention. It gets, you know, maybe someone will actually read that email you sent and they might actually consider calling you back. So while this advice doesn't guarantee anything, it might give you an actual chance at an interview, and that's a start. I hope this helps. I hope this advice can help some of you find a little more success in your career, and until next week, I'll see you later.